Hi everyone, thank you for joining us uh, on this webinar. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Donna Porter and I will be the moderator today. Uh, my background is in marketing, product and business strategy for tech organizations. I've worked for various companies, including Microsoft, who are here on the panel with us today, as well as founded my own startup. But today we are here to talk about the digital identity space, which is going through a rapid transformation. Uh, a shift is currently underway that focuses on customer centric solutions that enable consumer services well beyond initial onboarding and KYC. And I'm very happy to have with me today three experts who will share their views on the future direction of identity verification and the new solution from Authentics and Microsoft that we are here to introduce. So first, I'd like to introduce the panelists. Let's start with Mark, Mark Brady. VP of Emerging Products of Authentics. Mark, let's hear a few words about yourself and Authentics. Sure, thank, thank you, Donna. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mark Brady. I'm the VP of Emerging Products at Authentics. I've been with the company for a little over three years. And my, my, my background is I've held roles both as PayPal and Citigroup um, with a focus in, in the identity space. And um, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to be be here with us today. Great. Next, we have Pramal Gandhi, Senior Product Manager uh, for Microsoft Entra. Pramal, take it away. Hey, hi, uh, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I am a product manager within the Microsoft Entra division, and uh, the focus of our division is to enable uh, ISVs, uh, you know, developers and uh, even IT administrators to kind of you know use our identity platform and develop uh, apps. Uh, uh, we maintain an app library for uh, apps that are integrated into the identity uh, space. Um, and I've worked uh, in the identity space within M365 before this. Uh, so yeah, uh, glad to be here. Great having you. And last but not least, we have Deepak Marda, Senior Product Manager at Microsoft for Third Party Compliance Engineering. Deepak? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Deepak Marda. I am a product manager in uh, Microsoft Security. Our job is to make sure that the third party ecosystem is uh, the most trusted ecosystem in the world uh, at Microsoft. In that regard, uh, we always face challenges as bad actors get more sophisticated. Uh, they find new ways of attacking our ecosystem. Um, we are always looking for ways to uh, to put hurdles in their way, and uh, here is a solution that I would love to speak about uh, as as we go into the call. Wonderful. So thanks, guys, for introducing yourself. So I'd like to kick us off to start with a question to give more context about We Are Authentics and my. <laughs> Dan, I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, I think the next slide is we just wanted to introduce Authentics. Sure, thanks, Mark. Why don't you say no. a few words to the people who, who aren't as familiar with yeah. us? Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, thank you again all. Um, so I, I think the first thing to know about Authentics is we're best known for the verification of, of government issued documents. Um, but in addition to that, we also have a, a suite of different services also in the verification space. Um, we pride ourselves on 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 being the only fully automated digital the only fully automated verification solution when it comes to documentation, um, which allows us to verify documents um, on average between four to eight seconds. Um, we're also proud that all of our technology is 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 homegrown. Um, we're truly global. Um, since we started in 2012, we verified over one billion identities. And we're excited to share with you guys today what we believe is is um, the future of identity verification and identity management. Thanks, Mark. And I believe Microsoft uh, need no introduction. So Primal and Deepak, I'm not going to uh, let you introduce Microsoft because I believe we all know. And through the rest of the panel questions, I'm sure we'll hear more about the capabilities. Yeah, so let's start. Company based out of Redmond. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk. Yeah, uh, let's give some context about why we here at Authentics and Microsoft feel that now is a time to elevate the subject to the larger community that relies on identity verification. 
uh, the identity verification industry is reshaping the power of verifiable credentials and cryptographic verification. Um, I saw that one prediction by Liminal Research is that the total addressable market for reusable identity by 2027, which is just four years from now, will be an astonishing 266 billion. Now, is that the identity? Is that something that the identity community and organizations serving employees and society in general should be excited about? Mark, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Thank sure. You, I, I, I started the short answer. Yes. Um, and we, 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 we see this, see this as, as, a, as a paradigm, paradigm shift, shift, actually, in how consumers will present their identities to organizations, but also how organizations will will verify the identities. Um, of their of their consumers, and it's really de down to the the power of the cryptographic of, of cryptography, and and its ability to actually verify mathematically individuals. Um, I would also say, finally, for the first time in 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 our industry, we we now have standards. Um, we we have standards that we can all align to. Um, that is verifiable credentials, which were published by the World Wide Web Consortium. And they also carry with them a set of privacy-preserving principles um, that we at Authentics, we, we believe ethically, is ethically responsible. Um, we think it can unlock a lot of economic growth and um, we actually want to help accelerate that. And it's for that reason that we've chosen to, to partner with Microsoft, um, who also believe in, in the value that it can bring. And we've developed a, a, a united solution. And I just want to hand it now over to from all who he want, he's going to share a little bit about those capabilities. Uh, yeah, no, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mark. It's great to see, you know, as you're seeing on the screen, the uh, the product that Authentics has launched today uh, leverages, you know, the verified ID platform. And in terms of the platform, what we offer is uh, the, on the on the Entra portal, we offer a mechanism by which you can uh, decide the look and feel of the card that you're see, seeing on the screen. We provide APIs for issuance, verification, uh, even revocation, and also admin APIs to kind of set up verifiable credentials uh, for your uh, for your customers. Uh, and then thirdly, we uh, we also have an open uh, source um, uh, open source library that we use within Authenticator to actually receive and store those credentials uh, uh, with the with the necessary cryptography. So so that's uh, that's in you know, in a nutshell, what the platform offers and what uh, Authentics has been able to leverage to to develop this product. Great, Deepak, do you want to add anything on that? In the security space, we are seeing increasing demand. So you mentioned, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a huge industry. So I see it firsthand. We used to be only a handful of us at Microsoft who began this journey about eight years ago. And today it's a team of more than 200 uh, full time FTEs um, uh, who are uh, dedicated to this work. We used to process about uh, uh, hundreds of thousands to a few million transactions to now it has grown overall to trillions of transactions at Microsoft. Wow, that, that, that is quite astounding. You know, I want to ask you guys now that in this new world of uh, verifiable credentials, decentralized identity management, we know that there's benefit to both the organizations and the individual identity owners. Can you maybe share your thoughts about what the community believes that digital identities or verifiable cred credentials can unlock for the organizations themselves in terms of value? Prama, maybe you can start? Yes, absolutely. So today, you know, in today's world, if you go to see, if you want to set up, uh, if you want to do identity verification, um, you would have to set up federations between every Fortune 500 company that wants to do ident identity verification would have to set up something we call federation, right? Which is a custom setup between between an issuer uh, or between a verifier and um, uh, any customer, right? So users. Uh, having to and users now have to verify their identity over and over and over again at each of the companies that they interact with, um, with reusable identity power, uh, you know, uh, uh, from Authentics powered by uh, Microsoft Entra verified ID platform. This uh, 
This is now based on decentralized identity and verifiable credential standards. So it eliminates the need to set up custom uh, integration, aka federation between issuers and verifiers. Uh, and in the process, you can imagine it sets up a way more superior experience for the user because he, he doesn't have to keep entering the same sort of information like, you know, driver's license, this name, date of birth over and over again, because now Authentic has, an, has a verified ID available that can be reused with just a click of a button uh, on the phone. So in short, I would say organizations are looking for uh, with, with this, the key benefit for organizations is faster, easier and cheaper. Right, uh, while also improving their security posture, uh, because when I say security posture, I'm also referring to you know now they don't as a customer you don't have to collect data from a user, pass it on to to Authentic. Authentic then has to process that data, which uh, you know from a privacy angle, if you were to able to redirect to Authentic directly for this information, then as a customer you also helped. Uh, achieve some privacy compliance. So I think uh, cheap, faster, easier, cheaper is the main benefit what, what organizers, uh, organizations are getting here. Great. Anybody, Mark, you want to add something on that? Yeah, I, I would just add, Dana, that in, in our expertise specifically, Authentics, we know that identity verification can be expensive to organizations. It can be expensive to Authentics to process the verifications that we have and I would also say that when we when we speak with our customers who are often leveraging our solution for reasons such as onboarding um, the, the steps that individuals uh, need to go through it can be a barrier to entry as much as we have have done over the years of of our lifetime um, as, as at Authentics to streamline that process to guide our customers in terms of maximizing conversion uh, when they are onboarding um, their users. Um, however, with, with verifiable credentials, it, it reduces the steps to verify an individual without compromising on the on the security. Um, there's also the, the added benefit that um, Pramal and I, we haven't really talked too much about yet, but in terms of the, the privacy preserving aspects of, of this product, um, it, it enables organizations to minimize the amount of personal user data that they actually keep on file. And by minimizing that, you're also you're 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 actually reducing the liability of actually holding that 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 level of data that um, that you have to carry. And I think we're all familiar with the various different organization breaches that um, happen in the various different different sectors. Um, and I would say it's probably accurate to say that each one of us as individuals, we, we've been impacted on, on some level as well. So, so, that, so that's a good point. So maybe that can take us off. So we've been talking about organizations. Let's talk about the other side. What about us as consumers, as individuals? Uh, can we talk a little bit about what consumers can look forward to by holding this type of a digital ID or verifiable credential? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep. I'm, 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 I'm. Excuse me. You're on a roll. Keep I'm going. You're going to pause, uh, so I'll just keep going. Um. Yes, Dana. And I, I think we we try to follow as much research as we can in terms of consumer sentiments about these these sorts of things. And I think our consensus is is that there is a greater demand for for privacy controls um with individuals. I I read a study um just this week, but from Wakefield. And where they said that eight out of 10 Americans believe that they have little or no control over their data once it's been shared with organizations. And um, I mentioned already that data breaches year over year are on the rise, and that's a fact. And I, I think it's it's reasonable to say that we are all victims of, of identity theft in, on some sort of level. Um, so there needs to be a better way, and, and this is what the VC, the Verifiable Credential Standards, have, have set out to do empowering individuals to actually hold their own data and manage that data on their device and to choose what attributes about their identity that they wish to share with the services that they want access to and and they they give consent they're giving their permission to share their identity i think a good example that we we often use is in the online space where you, if you take a gaming platform, for example, um, that is age, an age-restricted game, where typically 
and um, these we're starting to see more platforms where they're actually requesting government issued documentation to verify um, that the individuals are of age when when they enter that platform. And um, the reality is, is that these gaming platforms need not actually have all of that information that is provided on, on that government issued ID. They don't need to know the, the image of the individual that's on the ID. They don't need to know the physical address if it happens to be a driver's license. They don't even need to know that it's a date of birth. What they actually need to know is that the individual is of age and that they are good to enter into that platform. And that's what, one of the fundamental features of verifiable credentials that we are excited about and we believe society should feel excited about. I love that example because again, it's a good, it's, it's a really good example of showing that while they were only looking for one piece of information, today we're actually showing them everything, whereas in the future, it's, they just need a basic yes, no question. Am I of age, yes or no? Result. Well, anything else around consumers, Pramal or Deepak? Yeah, I, I'll expand on, you know, my uh, prior thing that uh, just when we were describing the benefits to organizations, I also mentioned that, you know, yes, they can increase their user experience uh, much, uh, much better by not having the user to enter again and again in a, in the same uh, in the same spirit, right? For games, right? From a user perspective, uh, I might be playing, you know, several, you know, several different games, right? And having to do this over and over again for every game that I play is can be really, you know, fatigued, right? And it can, so, so it, I think from a consumer perspective, it's a beautiful experience where, you know, uh, you can use your verified ID to, you know, verify the age over and over again with just a click of a button. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, millennials today don't want to stand in the queue for four or five hours to get like, you know, government issued identities also. So you're definitely looking to a future where uh, government issued identities would also be in this form uh, with Europe already started on that. Uh, February 27th, they launched the uh, reference architecture for their uh, digital identity. Right. OK, so for those that uh, might not know, Authentics again has partnered with Microsoft to develop a verifiable credential solution, which is powered by Microsoft's Entra's verified ID platform. Uh, and in addition, we are also proud to be selected as Microsoft's preferred IDV provider for one of its own business use cases. Before we go into this uh, discussion about the solution itself, I want to show you a short video that we created to illustrate the value of this partnership between Authentics and Microsoft and the solution that we are introducing today. It's a quick one minute video and uh, we want to show you how it's, it's working. Let's go. So hopefully you all going, you all saw the video and you went, wow, I'll have two. But uh, Deepak, maybe you can share with us a little bit about how this new solution is going to help your business at Microsoft and why Authentics was selected by Microsoft. We see the solution as a great way to increase effectiveness of ID verification while reducing the friction for users. And all the time the user is in control of what information they share and whether they should share it. Microsoft Entra makes it possible. In a typical solution, users need to go through the friction every single time. In this scenario, they will get verified credentials issued once. 
store those securely in Microsoft Authenticator or similar wallet app and present it anytime they need to prove their ID. We plan to use it in our onboarding scenario where we need to verify that the individuals who are signing up on behalf of companies are indeed who they say they are. And uh, especially in cases where accounts are compromised and um, it, it may not be somebody uh, who is listed on the account that's truly operating the account. So who's behind the keyboard? We need to know in critical actions and that's the scenario in which we plan to use it. Wonderful. So, so maybe maybe let's pick up on these uh, on case on use cases because I know everybody who's listening on the call is in a different industry in a different vertical. Can maybe we get some additional examples of what other types of use cases we think will be adopted by organizations around this in the not so distant future? So the type of use cases I can imagine. Uh, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Deepak. Um, look, the way I, I, I've been monitoring this space for now for for a few years, and I, I think to imagine a, a use case for for reusable identity or verifiable credentials is is to imagine any moment in your life where you have to present a a, a form of identification. Um, I think that. Um, but I, I think it's important to state that the the use cases can go way beyond the presentation of a of a government issued document. And um, we're even we're seeing or observing some examples in the industry where if there is a need for an individual to verify that to verify their employment status or to verify their education and um, history, for example, what diplomas they have, and um, these can all be facilitated through the technology. Um, that 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 Microsoft really the infrastructure that Microsoft have have developed um, and other use cases are in the medical field. Um, I think many of us are familiar with carrying our immunization certifications, and um, that's also another uh, relevant use case. We've talked a little bit about age. Um, I'm actually seeing there's there's a there's a lot of um, traction over in Europe at the moment in terms of how verifiable credentials can facilitate university transfers. So these are students that can then, they, they want to switch for a semester or a module and um, that they can actually have a credential that they can present on the on the receiving end or the new university that, um, that they want to uh, present versus having to carry the various different uh, physical documents um, that they that require submission, manual review. Um, so they're, they're just some examples. I'm sure Pramal would has is familiar with some more as well. Absolutely, yeah. No, uh, uh, some of the other uh, things that we are seeing is uh, student ID cards, uh, membership or loyalty cards. You know, uh, professional academic learning credentials. Uh, these these are common things. But uh, as I think Mark said, it's I mean the best way to visualize this thing. I always say is like you know. You take out your wallet and if you are presenting something right to to somebody for verification, that's uh, th that's in your mind. Uh, uh, that, that's that's their uh, use case there. And uh, uh, it could also be in a digital world where, you know, you are providing a, a lot of times, you know, email gets used as like the verification thing, right? Mm -hmm. But email paired with say a verified ID would make it way more secure, right? Uh, in terms of Say you're accessing some high valued resources. Uh, uh, even in the case of OneVet, I believe, you know, uh, in Deepak's case, you know, there is email verification, but then a verified ID is on top of it. So that way, you know, you're, you're absolutely sure uh, you are who you are, right? Who you claim to be. Great, I love it. So, so I think you, you mentioned uh, gaming, health, academia, uh, enterprise. Uh, and basically, I think the key of what we're saying is that any document or anybody that needs to verify you basically can benefit from this kind of a solution. So uh, I think, honestly, this is probably one of the broadest solutions out there that is going to be um, implemented. I guess so that brings like us to the next question. Uh, this is a step change in our industry because obviously we've been doing ver verifying IDs for a while, but this is a step change in how we do it. Uh, it's been talked about for a few year now, for a few years now, but it's still an emerging industry. What are some of the challenges that you see 
uh, that are going to happen before actually mainstream adoption takes place. Mark, do you want to kick us off? Sure, Dana. Um, I think there were, uh, there were a few challenges that have um, hesitated the, or, or sort of slowed down the acceleration of, of this new wave. I, I think um, one is the comprehension of it, um, understanding uh, the mechanics of the technology. Um, it, it is it is a, a new technology in some senses, and it is it, it does very differently from um, traditional um, identity verification. Um, and so I, I think we feel we have a responsibility. I feel Microsoft feels they have a responsibility to to educate the community um, in, in terms of how this works, where the value lies. Um, but it's a journey, and it's a, a journey we're getting better at in terms of educating um, uh, customers and prospects and, and the larger community. Um, I think something else is inertia. Um, I, I think fundamentally there, there are some fundamental differences with how organizations um, could potentially manage their, their user data, whether that user data is about their employees or, or about their, um, the consumers that, that they serve. And um, we're talking about implementing privacy preserving um, characteristics of um, when individuals are onboarded to, to an organization. And I, I think historically, at least in sort of the last um, uh, 10, 20 years, we've, we've been sort of, I, I, I think it, the expectation is that data is king and that organizations value from the amount of data that, yeah. um, that they carry about individuals. But I, I think we're starting to see that a shift there where where organizations are, are feeling this an ethical an, an ethical consciousness to how they manage user data and so um i i think we expect we're going to start seeing more traction we're we at authentic are certainly in discussion with with um with customers of of ours who that is actually the number one reason why why they want to adopt a solution like this is for the privacy preserving um characteristics um, I think one more, Dana, that I would share is um, is the pace of, of regulation, and, and this doesn't necessarily apply to all industries, um, but if you look at some of the more highly regulated industries, um, particularly financial services and, and, and the payment space, um, there is, there, there is, if those are, that's an industry or those are industries where, um, Compliance is, is is fundamental, and and typically the procedures of these these compliance policies and practices is that um, these organizations need to actually hold um, hold the information about their customers, um, and typically have to retain that information for many number of years in the event that they are audited by the regulators, and so. Um, with verifiable credentials, it, 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 it is fundamentally about data minimization. Um, but I'm encouraged and I, I think um, I speak for Pramal and Deepak. We attend conferences where um, where regulators are actually speaking about this technology. They see the potential that it has in, in those more highly regulated um, verticals um, and they're paying attention to it. I just think it, in that case, in that example, where there's so much sensitivity around compliance, um, know your customer policies, it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, but I think in other industries, we're starting to see a more accelerated demand for um, for, for this, given the, 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 the value it can bring. All right, Pramal, anything to add on that one? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, Mark covered it uh, beautifully. I I think uh, where Mark touched upon the piece of you know uh, inertia, I think sometimes the it uh, the inertia can be dealt with by bringing the stakeholders together, right? For example, in an onboarding scenario, HR is as much invested in it as IT or identity team is invested. So kind of bringing them together and showing them the end-to-end -end value uh, helps you know uh, helps kind of drive that uh, you know drive that change. Great. So, so I think talking about challenges, uh, Deepak. So, I want you to, to get us all excited and explain to us. So, why now? Why is now the time that it's actually all going to happen? So, we've been on this journey for eight years. So, I would say we're already late. <laughs> I needed this technology yesterday. The need has existed for years. 
people have tried innovative ways such as uh, token devices or smart cards uh, as ways to know that you are indeed who you are especially when you are accessing critical resources or high value resources what has taken this long in in making it mass market and scalable has been the technology evolution itself so before this face matching wasn't at the level of sophistication where it is today ocr wasn't at the level of sophistication where it is today and uh, keeping tamper proof tokens on your devices and mobile uh, wallet usage wasn't at the level where it was uh, it is today and so now we are uh, because of these uh, trends uh, we are at the cusp of uh, this technology just taking off so what you're saying the needs has been here around for a while but the technology wasn't uh, up to par and now we're sort of in this perfect storm where technology is good enough to meet the demand and that's why we think we believe we're going to see this explosion of of demand for this um yes. Thanks, Deepak. I want to address some questions that we've seen. Uh, Mark, I'm going to give you the first one for you. Uh, there's a question for those of you us who are less familiar with this field. Could you explain what this a bit more simply? Is it an app, a consumer download, or is it a verified credential I will hold in the digital wallet on my smartphone? It's um, it's it's kind of all of the above, actually. But I I, I would say that as um, the, the the last explanation um, where it's it's your digital identity that's stored within your your local device or your 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 the smartphone that every one of us carry around with us today. Um, in terms of what is this, and um, I would say that Microsoft ha are bringing the the infrastructure. They are bringing the platform that enables the ability to issue credentials. And for those credentials once issued to be accepted within an ecosystem um, that each organization gets to, to decide um, to what extent they, they want to allow those individuals that have these credentials to, to have them accepted um, uh, across different, different services and, and tools and, and, and products. Um, the expertise that, that we at Authentics are bringing is our rich expertise in identity verification. Um, and, and so it's for that reason that Microsoft came to us to help with this. And it just so happened that we, we mutually believe in, in the ethical values that, that this solution can actually um, offer organizations and, and societies. And so just to recap, um, it is a set of APIs um, that, um, that, well, one of which will be made available through Authentics in order to initiate the verification for, um, for, for your consumers. Um, and also sec secondarily, um, through the Microsoft platform, um, they provide an interface where you can actually set, set this solution up and, um, and, and, and actually start activating issuing credentials and, and accepting them uh, within the walls with which you, you wish to define. Um, by the way, this is a question that we would love to go deeper with anybody on the call, um, in sort of more so in a in a, in a dedicated uh, demo session. Um, so please feel free to to reach out, and we'll we'll um, we'd love to set that up. Thanks, Mark. Now, there's another question that I believe you may have already addressed in this answer: is how do you secure the VC on a phone other than the phone security itself? I don't know, maybe Deepak or Pramal, you want to maybe add some comments on that? Yeah, uh, let me. Uh, so, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, verifiable credentials, what happens is that the uh, when the issuer actually, you know, issues the verifiable credential, it signs the uh, the credential with um, uh, with its with its private key, right? And the public key is written uh, to the di distributed uh, to the you know distributed location. When the issuer actually presents the verifiable credential, it again signs it with its private key, right? right and writes the public key to the distributed uh, system. When a verifier wants to verify it, he has to have both the keys, right? So it's like a bank locker account, right? Like the verifier cannot, uh, you know, verify the signatures unless 
uh, it has the public key for the issuer and the public key for the user, right? And the right one. Otherwise, you know, if a imposter user is presenting this data, the public keys would not match. And so the user, uh, basically the verifier will not be able to confirm that this is the right user. In terms of uh, the security on the device itself, uh, this has the same a level two security like authenticator has for everything and uh, and basically you know uh, we are also in preview for a feature where face id will be verified so when you're presenting the data your face id will be so if uh, if somebody you know uh, got hold of the data and somehow uh, then they will still not be able to present it because the face id will not match Thanks. Dana, i just want uh, to add something it's as well. Sorry, Pramal, were you, were you maybe? I, no, no, oh, if if just... I, I, I was just going to ask Eddie if, if that answers his question or did he have any further questions? He can't talk, so he'll, he'll type if he has a day. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Sure. I, I just wanted to say that um, I think part of my question, or uh, the question that was asked of me, uh, was is this an app? And I, I don't think I properly addressed that. Um, the answer is yes, the, the, the verifiable credential is, is stored within a mobile application. Um, as I, we've mentioned earlier uh, during this call, we partnered with, with, with Microsoft. And so by default, that mobile application is the Microsoft Authenticator application. Now, for anybody on, on the phone or on this call that is more visualizing a solution where your organization and your app would actually hold the verifiable credentials. That is a, that, that is a configuration that is, is absolutely available. And um, Microsoft have a, a mobile wallet SDK um, where that then enables each organization um, to, to both through the power of Authentics issue the credentials, but store those credentials on your preferred mobile application. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we have another question here from Ian. Uh, is there any plan to be able to use this reusable ID in person, e.g. to buy alcohol in a store? And I yep. actually, I want to I actually broaden that question. So can we expect citizens to eventually not carry any physical IDs? What do you guys think? Deepak, would you want to start on that one? Deepak's smiling. That's why you're getting this, Deepak. Well, during pandemic, okay you couldn't present your physical ID even if you wanted to. So that has taught us uh, that there are going to be scenarios wherein you will not need or you will not even be asked or given the opportunity to present your physical ID. Digital ID is uh, pretty much a necessity at that point. Dana, I would I would add that um, I, I agree with Deepak, first of all, I, I certainly there, there is going to be a world where each of us are going to be carrying our identity documentation on our on our smart devices, especially when you consider I think it's like I read recently it's something like 85 percent of the world's population has a has a smartphone and that was an Ericsson study. Um, and so I, but but in saying that the guidance from at least the US states is that even those individuals that can that have a, a a digital ID that's based on verifiable credentials or or mobile driver's license, um, that they're they're still encouraging citizens to carry the the physical um, the physical documents themselves. But I I my instinct and our hypothesis is that it's only a matter of time. Interesting. So we'll have to get back here two years from now and see where that's going. Yeah, we have another question. When will this be live? Are we talking future or is this happening as we speak? Um, I just want to make sure, did, did we answer Ian's question entirely? I, um, I think. So. Oh, we did, did we? OK, great. Yeah. OK, sorry, so guys, is this live? Deepak, is this live? Microsoft Entra is already live. You can set it up. Uh, and Premal can speak to that much better than I can. Uh, in our scenario, we will uh, we will take the approach of uh, testing it in some critical scenarios, maturing the workflows, and then expanding and scaling it. Uh, we plan to go live in our scenarios, that, the limited scenarios that we have uh, implemented it in, uh, in July. 
of 2023. Dana, I would just add that um, the, the the United um, solution between between Microsoft and and Authentics is is officially live. Um, while Deepak is is preparing to actually test out the solution um, end to end, um, our our API is is live. We have documentation, and um, we're we're ready to hear from customers that have use cases and and how we can actually help them. Mark, maybe can you talk about what countries and what documents are actually covered by Authentics uh, and this solution specifically? Uh, then I'll just like to correct one point, I think, sure. just for the audience here. Uh, Mark, I think when you mentioned API, you, you meant uh, verification website, correct? Right, a verification mm -hmm. app is already available that yeah. will be able to verify and then issue a verifiable credential at the end of the verification process. Correct, Pramal. Thank you for crystallizing, Pramal. Um, so I, I was just asking about the, the the number of countries, the number of documents. Is this limited by certain geo, by a certain type of document, or can this work really for anything? This can really work for anything. I, I think something uh, that we're very proud of is that we read document types, both driver's licenses, passports, national ID cards, in regional languages for over 190 um, 190 countries, um, so that's in 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 the multiple of thousands of of documents, um, and we're continuing to add new documents as as we see them in our traffic. Um, our solution is based on on machine learning neural networks, and so periodically we do see new documents. We train those documents and we add them to our traffic, and so. Um, all of that is made available as part of the um, uh, the, the reusable ID solution with, with, with Microsoft. Great. So I think we spoke about several use cases and we have a question here specific about gaming. How can gaming companies implement verified credentials and digital wallets in a way that is compliant with relevant re regulations and privacy laws? Well, do you want to take that one or I, I, I can try, but I'm worried I'm talking too much. So if uh, I understand correctly with the rel uh, relevant regulations and privacy laws, right? How gaming industries implement verified uh, uh, in a way that is compliant with. So basically when you talk about compliance with regulations, uh, privacy regulations specifically, you, uh, well, one of the key aspects of the privacy regulation is, you know, accessing minimal amount of data from the users or you know at, at least not being like a middleman into that uh, into that process where the where the holder and the verifier are involved so it is as close to the physical world as possible right where you uh, you are at the airport you're showing your uh, showing your id and they are looking at your face and they're matching it on the fly right that's what we want to bring that level of trust into the uh, into the digital world so i think from uh, from being relevant with the privacy regulation we have the platform and uh, i think authentics offers the way for you to customize the claims that you request in there and i think that will help you achieve your your privacy laws right because you will limit what you take from the users uh, according in accordance with whatever privacy laws are in in your state or city or uh, country great I can expand a little bit on that because I think there's there's different perspectives you could bring in terms of answering that question. And I, I think perhaps if if the question was also considering what what does the user experience look like when a when an individual or, or a gamer approaches their platform? And I, I think it's important to remember that that first time uh, when that individual is either purchasing um, or accessing um, the, the, the game in, in question. And so if you could imagine that, that, that gamer coming to a website, um, going to purchase the, the product or to access the game, um, they would be called to perform identity verification um, where powered by Authentics and, and the, the underlying Microsoft components of, of Entra Verified ID, um, Authentics would perform that verification. We would invite that user to upload a government issued document. Um, we can configure this, this, this experience so that we can also collect a selfie image. Um, if we want that selfie image to be live so that we can corroborate between 
the selfie as well as the cropped image on the document. We can power that um, along with other configurations. Um, but assuming that we're, we're dealing with, let's say, the happy path, um, we can then, once we have verified that individual, we will issue that credential. We will deposit that credential within the preferred mobile application. And from that point forward, when this individual is looking to gain access and to use the, the service, in this case, a game, um, they, they, they would simply have to present their verified ID. And, and by default, that is, they have to scan a QR code, um, which then initiates the transaction. And then they are, um, it's that moment with which they actually share their, or give consent to actually share an attribute or a claim as Pramal mentioned, about their identity so that they can securely have access to that service. Thanks, guys. So I think we have time for one last question, and I'm going to throw it out there. How much does it cost? Sounds expensive, guys. Talk to me. I'll start. I'll I think start. that the short answer is we, we want to talk to customers. Um, we, we want to hear from you about your use cases. We want to know um, I mean, of course, with, with, with any new engagement, we, we're, we're, we'd love to hear about sort of the volumes um, that which you're, you're thinking about. Um, so that, that yes, that, that's how I, I would answer that. We'd love to speak with you about that. Deepak Pramal, any, any words on pricing and costs? What do you guys think? Well, from a Microsoft uh, perspective, uh, like we are providing the platform for this, and today the platform is available to uh, available for any subscription of uh, of Entra, right? So you, the free subscription or the premier, uh, all of them have this uh, these capabilities available. And from the user perspective, or as a B two B user um, of this technology, I would say. I would assess the cost of the damage that if uh, bad actors got in or you have regulatory violations or other issues um, and weigh that against um, your cost of processing so many transactions uh, in an alternative fashion, uh, considering that this would uh, come out to be significantly cheaper. So I think we got the political answers, but, but, but I like what you guys are saying. In essence, you're saying, People are paying already, guys. Uh, organizations and consumers, they're already paying today in some shape or form for constant verification. And I think what our panelists are saying is that this is simply a new form of doing it more efficiently and more seamlessly for both the organization and for consumers. And I think Microsoft and uh, Authentics are inviting you to discuss more. So guys, I just want to summarize that this is an exciting time for the industry. As a community, we're in the process of defining how we as world citizens can better present ourselves to other individuals, companies, governments, and countries. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more, uh, we would love to schedule a walkthrough or show you a demo. Um, we're going to be posting a link to where you can actually schedule a meeting in the chat, or you can go to the Authentics website. Um, I would like to take a chance to thank our panelists very much. Thank you, Deepak and Pramal from Microsoft for being such great partners and for helping us launch this innovative solution. Thank you, Mark from Authentics for uh, being the product manager for leading this solution. I hope everybody's enjoyed this uh, discussion and we hope to hear from you uh, privately. Uh, looking forward to, to chatting with people offline. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Paul.